Welcome back to Sip the Talent Films. I'm your host, Coach Evans. And hey, it's been a minute. Took a little time off. Had to do what I had to do. Had to reset with the missus. And it was a nice reset. It was a wonderful experience. I uh, appreciate her for doing what she did. And um, it was just an amazing experience. Just put it like that. It was an amazing experience. Uh, shared a little video while, while out and about. Now, if you haven't seen it, please go check that out. And it was just a few things that like I saw across the top of my phone while we were out, nothing in detail, nothing in depth, just something to, you know, just throw out there. But we're back, and so it's time to get back into the fold. And um, I was scrolling my little feed that um, kind of shoots me Baltimore Ravens news, and I came up with some, some things that were interesting. And I'll go into, we're going to go into a little detail later on today about the free agency recap, but we'll do that once I get to the crib. But let's start off with this, a few things that kind of came across my desk um, this morning, so to speak. And I want to talk about them a little bit. And then um, we'll get you prepared for what I'm going to do later on today. Uh, Ravens are targeting Michael Gallup. Michael Gallup, the former Cowboy receiver, who um, kind of had a decline this year. Um, City Lamb, you know, skyrocketed. Um, Brandon, I forget Brandon. This, their number two receiver kind of took off. Uh, they had two tight ends, two young tight ends that they chose to target a little bit more than Gallup. So Gallup's role was really limited uh, in his whole career from 2018 to 2023. He, had, he has 266 catches, 3,744 yards, and 21 total TDs. But last year, production didn't have very much. Only 34 catches, 418 yards, and only two touchdowns. So bringing that guy in, you know, to a wide receiver room right now that only has Rashad Bateman, Nelson Aguilar, Zay Flowers, and Tylen Wallace. So, do we need wide receivers? Yes. Is Michael Gallup one that I would say would fit what we do? He's probably going to be one of those right price, right price, right price, right time guys. So he may get in that mix and and be effective. Is I just don't see this as a, as a needle mover for our quarterback, man. Every, every move I want to see something that will help our quarterback. And, and will it help him a little bit? Yeah. I just, in free agency, I look for, for jumps in the needle. And I guess since I'm so late to the party in free agency, there, at this point, there aren't going to be any needle jumpers. All the needle jumpers are gone. So now we're looking at, you know, positional pieces. And would Michael Gallup be a positional piece? Yes, and try, I'm, I'm looking at this list. I'm trying to see. He'd immediately come in and be the fourth receiver, and that's before we even draft a receiver. If we do that, he I, out of the four guys I call, I think he'd only be better than Tylen Wallace, and that's pushing it because we haven't seen Tylen Wallace play a lot. So, I mean, Gallup, I mean, not Gallup Wallace. <laughs> Michael Gallup has a lot of experience. Has played a lot of snaps with the Cowboys, and at one point was a major factor in the Cowboys' uh, game plan. But right now, when I went to go look at the free agent list after I saw that the Ravens were bringing Michael Gallup in for a visit, it ain't much out there. Like, <laughs> the, we scraping the bottle of the barrel not look, looking for guys. Now, if we, if we wanted to go speed, if you wanted a speed guy, Quiz Watkins is probably one of the faster speed guys out there. Uh, he was injured last year with the Eagles and didn't have much of a role when he came back because they had picked up Julio also, so they kind of gave those snaps to Julio. But, um... It ain't much out there receiver-wise. Uh, it's really looking like it's going to have to be draft or bust in order to add a receiver. And But it's a good ton of good receivers out there. And uh, we'll discuss some of those next week with Chris just joking and myself. All right, the next thing that came across my desk as I was scrolling is an article from, from Ebony Bird. And it says, uh, three former Baltimore Ravens who won't live up to their new contracts. Uh, the Ravens said goodbye to some familiar players. And it's from Mike uh, Luciano. This is from the 17th. So this is from four days ago. And so uh, the first person they had on there is DuVernay. Uh, DuVernay signed with, with uh, Jacksonville Jaguars, a two-year deal, $8.5 million contract. And, you know, before DuVernay left, we were calling him uh, Fast Prochet 
Uh, wasn't really doing much in the receiver room. Uh, return game, he was pretty much straight line speed. If, if the return was blocked right, he, you could have an opportunity to, to have some success out of it. But he really wasn't making anybody miss or doing anything special. And then Tylen Wallace came in and with one or two punt returns, had a decent little average. And so, you know, if nothing else shakes, Tylen Wallace, that's your job right there to have. Even though DuVernay was an all pro, you know, return a couple years ago. I just didn't see much out of DuVernay. So, and I really think the year that he was all pro, it was hats off to the other 11 guys, the other 10 guys on the, the kickoff and punt return team because he don't really, he gets, got straight line speed. He ain't got a lot of shakes, he ain't got a lot of moves, and got a lot of jukes. Just if you get beside you, he can outrun you. And uh, he was number three on that list of former Baltimore Ravens who won't live up to their contract. Uh, number two on that list was, um, let me get, let me get to it. Geno Stone. Now, um, at one point, Geno Stone was um, leading the league in interceptions, if I'm not mistaken, or if he was always second behind Deron Bland, one of the two. But um, Geno finished with, uh, I want to say, second in the league in NFL with seven. Uh, definitely led the Ravens in interceptions. Uh, but again, once Marcus got healthy and Kyle was doing what he was doing, he was regulated to a backup role. People were asking me, like, what should happen with Geno and why are we taking him out? And you guys, you got to realize, Geno was fortunate, man. He, he made some good plays. He did. He, he had seven interceptions, which is always good. Got a contract out of it. Um, but he was always a backup. Is he going to go to Cincy and, and be good? Not, not really sure. His contract, a two-year deal, $15 million. You know, they got some young safeties over there already. Daxon Hill, Cam Taylor Britt, DJ Turner. Shit, can he even beat them guys out? That's the question. Can he even beat those guys out? They got depth at the safety position, but you know, maybe in the same situation he was in, trying to fight to get on the field. So uh, that's the second name that was on there um, as far as players who won't probably won't live up to their expectation with that new contract. Now, this third one is the reason I'm – bringing this, this situation to you. Third name on this list, and this, a lot of these articles I don't really pay a lot of attention to, but the third name on this list is uh, Pat Queen. And I'm gonna read exactly what it says. It says, uh, number one, linebacker Patrick Queen, Pittsburgh Steelers. Now I haven't spoken much on, on Pat Queen going to the Steelers. And y'all know how much of a, a, a Pat Queen fan I, I was, um, you know, as a Ravens. Um, Y'all saw the little video I put out where I deleted PQ stand off my my Twitter, but that was no 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 shade at him going to the Steelers and whatnot. I, I really haven't processed the fact that he's playing for the Steelers. I, I would I really would have rather him been at any other team other than Pittsburgh. But I understand he had to get his money. I don't think he got a lot of money. I don't think he got what he thought he was gonna get. But um he was Pittsburgh, and he made some comments, and I'll talk about those comments at a later date, but this is what the article says. Queen has been uh, Queen has been through quite the, quite the roller coaster with the Ravens fans. After a disappointing start to his career, was followed by a 133-tackle All-Pro season last year, Queen voluntarily put himself in the fan base's crosshairs by signing with the Steelers for $41 million over three years and declaring that he is ready to be that villain when the two teams meet up. I don't know if if, if uh, Luciano just put that put him as number one on this one because of what he said, or does he actually mean that? But I will see. We will get a chance to see how good PQ is. But don't think he won't go over there and have success because he's going to play behind probably one of the biggest space eaters in the NFL, and that's Cam Hayward. Then you got T.J. Watt up there, too. And you got the, the other end guy, edge guy. So that defense is – and you got Minka on the back end. That defense is pretty darn good. So, again, I ain't going to go into the PQ thing right now. I just, uh, you know, really hadn't processed the fact that he's gone over there. Uh, don't like it. Don't like it. But, you know, you got to get your money, man. So I, I understand. I understand. I understand. Third thing, we re-signed Arthur Marlette. How does re-signing Arthur Marlette help our secondary or help our defense as a whole? I think 
what Marlette brings is a, a Marlette, however you say his name, I, sorry if I'm butchering it. He knows the system. He knows the system. Hopefully, uh, Zoe is going to implement just some wrinkles on uh, Mike's system, and, you know, Marlette can find his way like he did last year. Uh, second thing is he made some key plays throughout the year. Did he make a ton of plays? No. He made some timely plays? Yes. And a lot of people I talk to that, um, you know, on both sides of the fence, you know, uh, whatever spec Raven spectrum you are, feel like timely defense is almost in, as important as – it's just as important as anything. Because you can have this great numerical statistical defense and you give up stuff in the fourth quarter, you, you, you trash. So having a timely defense is just as important, if not more important, more important than having a good numerical defense. And he's just a puzzle piece. He's not a star. He's just a piece of the puzzle. He can allow – I think he, him in the game can allow Kyle to play back, play up. Um, they can be more versatile with, with Marlette around. So I like that signing. I'm not saying he's a needle mover or a game changer, but he's just a different piece and allow uh, Zio, uh, Zach, uh, Zach, Zo. <laughs> some more options to, to deal with on the defensive side of the ball. All right, and so my last topic was um, I was worried about the O-line depth. And I was, as I was writing my little notes down, we signed uh, Josh Jones from the Houston, Texas. Houston Texans, I'm sorry. And um, so I was like, who? Anytime I have to say who when we sign somebody. And I'm a, I'm a fairly – knowledgeable football guy I think so myself but I had to say who on this one I had to go look him up and um, the first thing I did was see who he played for previously second thing is I went to his PFF grades and they didn't look good third thing I did was I went and um, texted another YouTuber that does Houston sports and I texted him to ask him how good was he he hadn't responded to me yet but uh, hopefully when he sees it he'll respond and I'll let you know what he says but um I'm worried about the offensive line depth, man. I'm worried about the offensive line depth. Really am. Um, Linda Bum, I'm not worried about. Ronnie, I like the way they redid Ronnie's stuff, and I got to get into more detail on that. Um, I got to look it up. I know they it's incentive-based, so I do know that. But Stanley, I mean not Stanley, uh, Simpson's gone. Uh, Morgan Moses was traded. Zeitler's gone. The only other person that even had snaps was Macari and, and Cleveland. So technically you got five guys, but technically you don't. So I'm looking for real heavy, 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 heavy O-line in this draft. A few guys out there that you guys know I like, Troy Fonu, uh, Jackson Powers Johnson, um, a bunch of different tackles out there that you know I can go off and name. Uh, I'm just worried about the old line, man. We got we got Henry, got Lamar, got some decent receivers. But if we ain't got the old line, we ain't got you know what? Four letter word. So <laughs> but I just wanted to come to y'all real quick. You know, been out the fold for a minute, took that much needed time, and again, thank you, wife, for putting that together. That was simply amazing. And um I'm back. So I'll see y'all soon later on today, man. We're gonna get this out to you soon and I'm gonna talk about the free agency recap as a whole uh, later on today and i'll see y'all soon man peace and love nice show if you like the video like the video and i'm out